Well, we are so excited to have you join us today. Uh, Taylor and I, we love teaching this class together. Uh, we're going to take you through Paragon listing entry. We're going to talk about maintenance. And of course, uh, if you haven't met Taylor, she's going to tell you all about photos because she's an expert in the subject. Um, and uh, Taylor, tell them a little bit about your background. Okay. Um so I work for my real source as well and do our communications as well as teach our photo program here at the MLS. Um, and I've worked on lots of projects with the realtors, um, talked on, you know, taught a lot of classes here. Um, but the class, uh, the program that I would say is probably the most popular is the photo program that I do. Um, right now it's a two part program that you can take. Um, some of the little, uh, Things that I talk about in the class, I sprinkle in throughout here just to kind of give you an idea of what you would get um, discussion wise in the photos class. Um, and then as well as this class and lead generation market stats. So, um, yeah, and our mixing it up episodes, uh, Colleen and I also do those every month. Uh, we're taking a break through the summer months, but we have special guests every every month and it's kind of like a variety show where we give away prizes and switch up the topics every month of you know something that's relevant to the industry um so we have 34 of those episodes actually on our youtube channel that we recorded that you can watch so wow. i'm going 34. to wow. yeah 34 it's fun that many. <laughs> i know i know we needed a little break for the summer right yes so um, yeah, so it's nice to see or see so many people registered for this class. I know that um, there'll probably be quite a few more possibly popping on because we did have a lot registered. Um, and just a couple morning announcements, things that I'd like to talk about is um, in terms of using GoToWebinar. If you've never taken a class um, on GoToWebinar before, we have a chat section as well as a question section that you can see. So if there's something that you want um, Colleen or I to dive a little deeper into or um, you know, repeat, you can go ahead and you can ask a question right there. One of us will be always monitoring that. Um, there's some handouts too that are attached that you can um, open up, double click, and they'll download those PDFs for you. And then in the chat section is where I'll be putting any um, relevant links based on stuff that we've talked about too for you. Awesome. Well, and I have to tell you, if you get a chance, you have to take Taylor's photography class. Um, she teaches a three-part class. I took it and I have to tell you, I thought I took pretty good photos until I took Taylor's class. Um, I learned so much and Taylor is great because she has a degree in photography and communication. So she's the one who puts out a lot of the great content that comes your way. Um, but if you have a chance, like I said, her her class is free for our members and our, our vendor MLSs. But she showed me amazing things. And I was telling um, uh, UPAR when we were having our UPAR class yesterday, how you showed me how to add more light and more aperture to my shot so you could get longer elongated hallways and how as agents we usually either end up in the picture of the mirror or we get that front and center toilet shot like we don't know in the powder room that there's a toilet right and how you have that patented shot of kind of looking down into the mirror off the counter and showing that beautiful you know granite and and it really I learned so much from your class and I thought I took pretty good photos until I took your class if your you photos have, have gotten really good though too even the sample <laughs> listing I'll show today I feel like your photos have gotten really really good and um, some of the things that Colleen's talking about, I'll have a sample listing since we are creating a listing from A to Z today. Um, so I will have a sample listing with some photos and I'll point out a few things for you guys. Um, but probably should have asked if you guys can hear and see us okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we can go into the questions area and just say, yes, I can hear you or yes, and we can see you. That would be helpful. That is always a good thing. It's terrible to get like four minutes in and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, the audio is not working, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Good. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Amy. Jeff. Okay. All right. So that well, now we know you know how to use the questions box. So let's get started. Yeah. If it's okay, Taylor, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take over that presenting role and we'll uh, get started talking about adding in a listing, getting ready for 
a listing presentation, what you need to know and how to get it into the MLS and then what happens from there. And then Taylor's going to show you all the really fun stuff with the photos and how to use social media to advertise your listing and so much more. So, all right. So at this point, when you are ready um, to prepare for your listing appointment, when you're ready to get that information going, where do you start? So you've got a listing appointment tonight. What's the first thing that you want to do? Well, first, I always recommend going to the BSNA records. I'm just going to grab one real quick here. And I like to simply go in and if you use this power search at the top, this is a really good way to find a property fast um, and to start researching it. One, it tells you if it recently closed. You can usually see what it closed for, were there concessions, what was the amount. So I'm starting to build my homework. So one of the first things that I want to do is I want to check the BSNA record. Now, um, this varies depending on which association that you're with. Um, so I kind of want to put that caveat out there. But if you are looking for the BSNA record, uh, Brian has done a great job of trying to integrate everything right into the listing ticket. So if it has been listed before, you can go right up to the power search, find that particular listing and start doing your homework on it. But I'm going to show you how to do the same homework, even if it hasn't been listed. So don't worry. But one of the things I like that Brian has uh, really done such a great job with is he's integrated all of our products into Paragon, meaning that if I really want the BSNA record for this property, the last thing I want to do is log out of Paragon, log into the BSNA site put in the municipality, now find the municipality, wait for that to load, then put in the property address. You know, it just, it takes a long time. So what you wanna do is you wanna start using these quick action icons or quick links, if you will, that will take you directly into those services for this specific listing. Now where this differs a little bit is depending on which MLS that you're with or which association you're with, sometimes these fees are even waived. So, for instance, uh, for my real source members, we waive your BSNA fee in Macomb County, any of the gross points, and uh, let's see, Macomb County, Genesee County, and any of the gross points. Meaning that if there's a two dollar fee that's charged, if you are a my real source member, that fee is waived in those particular counties. So, if I want to find out what is the BSNA information for this specific property? I'm going to go up to, and I apologize, it kind of looks like a, um, uh, kind of looks like a, a garbage can, if you will. I apologize. We've been giving Brian a lot of grief about that. It's actually supposed to be a government pillar that he smushed down onto a little tiny button. Um, and so that government pillar that you see right there, if you click on that, it's going to take you into the BSNA record for that specific property. So instead of logging out, going into BSNA, trying to find the right municipality, as you can see, it takes me directly into that specific property record. Now, um, if you are with ECAR, the East Central Association of Realtors, they actually waive the fee for Genesee County for their members. So it just depends on which board that you belong to if there's a fee. Now, not all municipalities charge a fee. Um, for instance, there's only a couple in Macomb County that do charge a fee. Um, so it just depends on if that municipality is set up in BSNA and if they want to charge a fee uh, for that additional revenue. Now, if they are charging a fee and you click on it, it will simply ask you for your credit card like it normally does. What it does is it takes out the legwork. I don't have to go look for it. It's automatically right there and then I can complete that process. So what I like about BSNA is more and more um, municipalities are now recording things like paid water bills, paid property taxes. Um, I just sat down with a homeowner and they had a $700 outstanding unpaid water bill. Well, water is attached to the property. So of course, that's something I need to put on their net out. When you're talking about selling a $50,000 home, it's important that we have that included. So when we're netting that seller out, they know oh, $700 of that proceeds is gonna go to pay your water bill. So those are important conversations that allows me to have with that seller ahead of time. Had another situation listed a uh, condo in Clinton Township and there were over $7,000 in property taxes owed. And it turns out she bought mom's condo when mom passed, never got homesteaded. 
So that again, that was a question that we were able to address right from the BSNA record. And by the way, I actually bring the BSNA record directly in to my CMA. I actually save it as a PDF and I use cloud CMA. So I pull that right in there. That way I can show as we're going through the CMA, I can show that there are these unpaid property taxes. And it also covers me because I can show that I went through the CMA with her and it has the date at the bottom of the BSNA record. So I know it was addressed when we went through it. So I like to have it just as sort of a, you know, showing that I covered everything with that seller. So uh, in that particular case, we ended up going down to the city. The, um, the city assessor said, yeah, no, it wasn't homesteaded. And they rebated her half of her taxes. So she ended up getting a really good deal on that by simply going down um, and, you know, saying, hey, I didn't know this needed to be homesteaded. My mom had passed away. So but it allows you to have those conversations up front. So as I'm scrolling through the BSNA record, I'm starting to do my homework. And where I'm starting is right up here at the top. I can see it as one full bath, 1,361 square feet, built in 1973, also has a half bath, three bedrooms. I'm building my comps is really what I'm doing. I'm actually going in and now I am starting to get the information together to search in Paragon to find those comps. So as I start to scroll through here, I can see even more it's built on a basement. Uh, I can see uh, that it does have a garage. Um, I can see the square footage of the garage. So all of that is included here. So it's really important to have that BSNA record. And again, what I do is I print it as a PDF and pull it into my cloud CMA. And that way I can go through all these additional pieces with her. Now, of course, BSNA is the trusted record. It's the one you want to have if you ever have a legal dispute. Um, it's the one a judge is going to look at because what we do is we use the live BSNA server. This is a little different than any other MLS in Michigan. Most MLSs use a feed into BSNA, but that takes time to be updated. So I had a situation where um, the we were not going to be able to close because there was unpaid property taxes. So my client went down, paid the property taxes in the morning, and because we used the live BSNA server, we were able to see that those property taxes were paid, um, and the title company then processed the paperwork, and we were still able to close. Because, again, we use that live BSNA server, you're seeing things almost instantaneously when the assessor updates them. So that's important, too. Um, BSNA, as I mentioned, is the trusted record. It's what the judge is going to look at. But I also check the realist record. And the reason is sometimes there are discrepancies. And it may not be a, a big discrepancy, but it might be a red flag of a question you might want to ask. So I always check both sources. That's just me. So realist is this red button that you see. So I, I mentioned that BSNA is kind of this uh, trash can looking. <laughs> it's government pillar, believe it or not. Um, and then realist is this red button right here. When you click on that realist record, realist is going to give you a lot of the same information, but it's going to give you even more information, like if it went into a sheriff sale, um, if they refied. So a lot of times if you're walking into a listing appointment and you're going to have to tell them, you know, you see that they refied last year and they bought it two years ago at a really high price. You may have to be prepared to tell them that they might be upside down in their home. I want to know that walking in because I want to have a net sheet prepared. I want to explain why they're going to be upside down. I want to I want to make sure I'm addressing those questions. Hopefully not as much in this market, um, but you do want to make sure that you've checked both of the records to cover all the bases. So as I'm scrolling down here, I can, of course, see the assessor's information. I can see the tax information. I can see the acreage, the lot size, uh, finished living, uh, basically above grade square footage, um, how many stories the home has. But every once in a while, you will see, and I had this happen recently, where it said MLS 2, tax 1. That means... Because Realist is pulling in from a combined source, if you will, it's not only pulling in from the municipality record, but it's also pulling in from the MLS record. That makes it a combined source. That's why generally a judge will use the municipality record because it's what the city has. It's one trusted record where this is actually pulling a combined source of tax information and the MLS information. 
but every once in a while you'll find a discrepancy. It'll say MLS one and next to it, it'll say tax two um, or vice versa. And in this case, um, that's exactly what happened. It had MLS said it was two stories. The municipality said it was one story. Turns out the man owned a dormer company and he put a second level on the home, but he never pulled a permit. So the city had no idea. That's a really great conversation to have ahead of time. Um, so it just allows you to see things that maybe don't match up or maybe questions you might want to ask. As we scroll down, here's where we can get into that um, sales history, who purchased it, when did they purchase it, did they refi, was it uh, conveyed on a warranty deed, was it an arm's length transaction, and again, if they refi, that's generally here too. You can also see the mortgage history, when the mortgage was taken out, what type of mortgage, um, and so this is another way to just make sure you have all the information to properly prepare for your listing appointment. All right, Taylor, do we have any questions so far on any of that? I saw the little question uh, light flashing. Nope. Okay. Muted. I was muted. Sorry. Okay. Um, no, no questions. Just somebody letting us know a little later that they could hear us. Okay. okay um, unless there's a raised hand that I missed, but. Um, nope. I just, I saw the question, so I just thought I would ask. Okay. Nope. Everything's good. All right. So. The next thing is, so now we're starting to build our homework. Um, now we want to get that in. Obviously, we want to go and start filling out our transaction forms. Um, we have something very unique. We have the push from Transaction Desk um, directly back into the MLS, which I really like because that saves you from having to go in, fill out a complete data sheet, then having to hand it to your admin or your secretary and fill out the data sheet all over again, right? We have something called the MLS push within Transaction Desk. Zipform um, offers this system as well. Um, and it's a way that you can fill out that data sheet and basically push it into a partial listing. So we're gonna go through that whole process in just a moment. But now that we've done our homework, we're ready to start filling our homework into our forms. We want to start filling out those listing contracts, those agency disclosures, and of course, most importantly, our data sheet to create our listing. So let's go over to that. Where you're going to find your, your files, if you will, your transactional forms, are it's going to be under resources. Um, so Brian's done a great job and, and Taylor helped out with this project too, um, of actually organizing it. So under resources, if you click on the resources tab and you look for online forms, you're going to see a login to zip form. You're going to see transaction desk, authenticine. The one that we provide um, for members is transaction desk. Although we do provide the integration to Zipform to do that push and pull from the MLS too. But we're gonna go up to Transaction Desk because when you are creating listing contracts, the last thing you wanna have to do is just go in and have to fill up every field, right? I wanna pull a lot of that right from the municipality so I don't have to fill out a lot of information. So let's actually take a look at that. I'm going to go over into Transaction Desk. And again, I got there right through resources. Here's where all of my transaction files are located. But what I want to do is I want to start a new listing. But what I want to do is start it from the municipality record so I don't have to fill out so much information. So I'm going to go right over here to the Add button and I'm going to start a new transaction. Now, there's a cheat here. So if you're taking notes, by the way, we are recording this class too. So if you miss anything, you can watch it again. Taylor's gonna give some great tips. If you're like taking photos and you're like, oh, what'd she say again? You can always go back to our YouTube channel where you're gonna find this class and you can watch it anytime. But in this case, I'm gonna say, okay, we're gonna list our 41539 Wessel Drive. And helps if I spell it correctly. And by the way, I always recommend naming your transaction after the property address. Now, some people say, well, I like to name it Bob Smith because he's my client. Well, here's the problem. If you only put in Bob Smith, when Bob Smith calls you to sell the house, now Bob Smith has multiple transactions and you're trying to figure out which one is which. So if you're going to put your client name in, it's just always a good idea to put the address in too. It just makes it easier to find later on. 
Of course, the key to Transaction Desk and Zipform and most forms products is having your templates established. That means your listing packet, your sales packet, your lease packet. By the way, you can do this on a broker level. You can even set up the auto tagging for signatures on a broker level and it saves so much time. But in this case, we're taking a new listing, so I'm gonna apply my listing package. This is where the cheat comes in. Now, when Brian was hooking all this up, now Brian is a tech guy. He's really smart, writes code. I mean, just he can do things that I am way never going to be smart enough to do. However, he's not an agent and he does not speak agent either. <laughs> So when you are looking to import information, Brian set this all up and he said, okay, well, because you are pulling in, uh, because you're creating a new listing, you want to pull from a trusted source. You don't want to pull from the MLS because what if that other agent who put it in, put it in wrong? You want to pull from a trusted source. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick that we want to pull from real list. And then Brian's like, okay, you can just put in the tax ID here. And then we kind of all shook our heads because we said, you know, Brian, agents don't memorize tax IDs. We know addresses. He said, oh, you know, you could see the little light bulb going on, right? So in order to do that, you're just going to click on that magnifying glass to the right. But here's where I have to caution you. Tax records are really so exact that if you put in too much information, you won't find a match. So here's what I mean. When you're using tax records, you only want to fill out three pieces of information. One, you want to fill out the county. Obviously, it needs to know that in order to pull the property information in. So I'm going to say I'm listing a property in Macomb County. Next thing is the street number. That's always going to be exact. What is the street number? And the root street name only don't fill out the city the zip code that because i promise you if it even differs slightly it won't find it so think of this like google less is best put in the basic keywords which are your county your street number and your root street name only what i mean by root street name is this happens to be wessel drive leave off the drives leave off the ways the places because if you type out the word drive and the municipality has a dr period it's not going to pull it's that exact so you want to make sure you have county street number and just the basic root street name leave off the drives the boulevards the ways leave all that off then you're going to go down to click search tax data and essentially it's going to pull that right up for you it even shows me who the owner of record is I'm going to select it, and now I'm going to select that I am the listing agent, which as you can see, because I applied my packet, it already knows that, and I'm going to hit the Create button. Essentially now, all of the forms that my broker requires are going to populate right into my transaction, and it's even going to do some cool things for me. So as I start to scroll through here, of course, it's filling out the street number, city, county, tax number, lengthy legal description, subdivision, tax ID. It's already starting to auto populate all of that information for me. But it does some other cool things. If I jump over to step three here, it even brought in me as the listing agent, of course, my brokerage, but it also brought in the seller of record. So if it's a husband and wife or, you know, maybe two people own the property, it will actually show both of those as sellers. Now, why that's cool, why that excites me is because it knows who the sellers are now. And on every document where it calls for the seller's names, it's going to preprint the seller's name underneath. And if you're using AuthentiSign, it will automatically tag the forms where each seller is supposed to sign an initial on the contracts, which I love. It saves me a ton of time. So now we're pulling in all of that information. Here's all of my forms that are starting to auto populate. But where I want to go now is really into the um, the actual data sheet. So we use the My Real Source data sheet. And I'm doing a single family home, but there's one for multifamily. There's one for, um, you know, vacant land. It just depends on what you're listing. But I want to show you what this does and why this is so cool. When you start filling out the required fields in the data sheet, basically what it's doing is it's filling out the things for you right inside of Paragon in a partial listing. 
So what happens is I'm going in and I'm obviously filling out anything that's read is required, some single family home. But some of this, when I'm preparing my listing contracts, by the way, some of this I don't know yet. I don't know what the final listing price is. I know what I'm gonna suggest to the seller, but that doesn't mean they're gonna go with what I suggest, right? I also don't know the room measurements. So what I do is I save as much of the information as I can. Then when I get back with my signed contracts, I fill in anything additional and I go right up to this upload listing button. Now let me kind of show you what this does. And I am not going to take the time to fill out the whole data sheet, but I'm going to kind of give you a step by step of what happens. So I'm going to fill out everything in red is required, and that's going to help me build my listing partial within Paragon. So I'm now going to go up to my upload listing button. Behind the scenes, what it's doing is it's creating a partial listing for me right here. So if I go to the listing sections in Paragon, there's listings and partials. So what it's basically doing is it's saying, okay, Colleen, you put in all the required stuff that we needed to know, we're gonna push it over into the MLS. Now there's a couple benefits here. One, if you're filling all that information out on your data sheet and you're now going to hand that data sheet over to an admin, and I've always been so blessed, I've always had such great admins that I've gotten to work with, but let's face it, um, at my company, there's 400 agents. They're helping agents as they're coming in the door. They're answering phone calls or setting up showing. So unfortunately, I turned my data sheet in and it was just a, it was a vacant piece of land. It was like 47,000. It went in at 470,000, big, big difference. Um, unfortunately, and it, and it happens, right? Because they're, they're multitasking, they're doing so much. So the idea is instead of me taking that data sheet, printing it off and handing it over to the admin, wouldn't it be nice if I could just click that button and send it over to the end because I know I filled that out properly. Um, I have a little OCD, so I kind of like to do those things on my own. So even if you're not turning your listing information into your admin, even if you're doing it on your own, it's a great way to easily fill out that data sheet and push the data over into the partial. So if I click on partials now, and I'm going to do, by the way, your admin can see all of the partials. So if you call your admin and say, you know, I just put a partial in the system, maybe your company policy is that the admin has to make it go live. Sometimes admins, brokers like admins to check it over to make sure, you know, that there's no fines or violations of MLS policy. So your admin can go in and actually see all of your uh, partials. They can even sort them by your name. They can go in and they can save them and make them live for you. Or if you're putting in your partial on your own, you of course can do that. I can go into my partial that we just created and I can say, okay, I want to um, go in and do things like now finish up any additional information that I wanted to add um, and put in that it is an active property. And if they're not ready to list yet, let's say I created the partial listing, but they're just not ready to put it on the market yet. Maybe they're gonna paint, so we wanna, put it on next week. You can, again, save it as a partial for up to 180 days. By the way, on 179, you can actually go in and resave it for another 180 days. It'll let you know when it's gonna expire. But if you are ready to make it live, you can hit that save listing, and now the listing is live in the MLS. A Couple of other things you're gonna wanna make sure you do is you wanna add those important disclosures. Remember that if you are using HomeSnap, I don't know where my phone is to actually show it. Um, if you're using HomeSnap Pro Premium, you actually see those disclosures in the palm of your hand when you're showing properties. Um, I was telling Taylor just the other day, I was showing a house in St. Clair Shores and there was some evidence of water in the basement. And you know, they asked me, well, what's, what's the water from? It was so nice when I could actually just open up the disclosures on my phone. We could review it while standing right there at the property. And I can even share them over to my potential buyers so that he can see them on his phone as well. Um, I love it when agents add, especially if you're listing a condo. I have to tell you, one of my biggest pet peeves in the whole world is if I am showing a condo to a dog owner, and if I have to call five different listing agents and wait for them to call me back to figure out if we can have a dog in that condo, that is so frustrating. It's so nice. If you're listing a condo, you could put in the rules and regs or the bylaws 
right into the associated doc. So when I'm showing the property and my buyer says, well, Colleen, can we have Fido in here? I can say, oh yeah, you can actually have up to two dogs, but they can't be over 20 pounds. We can have that discussion without me having to call five agents and waiting for them to call me back. So I love that. To add in those disclosures, um, what we want to do is we want to go to the add, edit documents right over here to the left. And you're simply pulling them in. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to add my seller's disclosure. I'm going to browse my computer to just find where I've saved that disclosure. So I've saved one right in here. Um, so I'm going to double click on it, add it in, and then simply give it a description. So I'm going to call this my seller's disclosure and then save and then what it's going to do is not only put it in paragon but again agents will be able to view that document in home snap pro premium too so another advantage um let's see what else did i want to show you oh um another pet peeve that i have and i'm going to jump back into the forms for just a moment another pet peeve that i have is how long it takes sellers to fill out the seller's disclosure you know what i'm talking about you go you hand them the seller's disclosure and you say, OK, this is a really important document. Fill it out truthfully, accurately. You go, you measure the rooms. Usually you end up measuring the rooms twice because it's taking them so long and you're thinking, oh, man, I wish I was home already. <laughs> so an easy way to resolve that is now if you are using Transaction Desk, you can actually send your seller's disclosure statements ahead. Um, and I love this because um, it allows me to send them ahead via email and then they can go ahead and fill them out at their leisure and I don't have to wait all night for that to happen. Um, so very quickly to do that, let me go back here for just a moment. I'm gonna go this way. Um, to do that, you can go right into Transaction Desk. In your file, Kind of froze up there for a second, so I apologize. Let's see if I can refresh this a little quicker. Um, in your transaction file, if you have your seller's disclosure, it can be emailed in an editable format that they can actually simply fill it out and hit save. Now, of course, they can print a copy, they can download a copy for themselves, but really the whole key is that they can go in, fill things out in a live, like if they make a mistake, they can fill them out again. Um, it's a live link, but it returns it to me as the agent. I can review it even before our listing appointment just to make sure it's filled out correctly. Because a lot of times, unfortunately, what happens is you, you know, you go in and there's nine scratch offs, right? Because they didn't realize, oh, there was an NA column and they've got it half filled out. And sometimes it can be just really difficult and it's really time consuming for them. So what I generally recommend is when you are filling out your forms, send your seller's disclosure ahead. Um, so if I am, and I'm just gonna show you what I mean here. So I'm gonna click on this seller's disclosure. There is, you can obviously email any forms out of Transaction Desk or Zip Form, but really the key is that if you do it in an unlocked format, they can fill it out directly from their email. So I thought I clicked on sellers, but I must have clicked on showing time. I apologize, it's running a little bit slow. So I'll try that again. Um, so when you're on your seller's disclosure, instead of sending it as a locked PDF, which obviously we send our documents in a PDF because we don't want our sellers or buyers changing things like the purchase agreement or the listing agreement, right? But when I send this particular document, this is something an agent is never filling out. The, the homeowner is filling that out. At least we're never supposed to be filling it out. Um, it's supposed to be filled out by the homeowner. So what I'm doing is I'm actually sending this document via email. Okay. But instead of sending it as a normal locked PDF, like we send everything else, I'm going to be sending it in an unlocked link. And that allows them to fill it out right from their email. So let me show you. So I'm sending it via email and I'm simply putting in the seller's name, the seller's email address. As you can see, it's kind of hesitating a little bit. I apologize. And if you hear the banging outside my door, Taylor, it's at, literally they're doing construction on the street outside my window. <laughs> you always have something going on outside. 
I know it's soon like it will be the, soon it will be the mowers every Thursday morning, like <laughs> last summer. I know, and it just it, we did Taylor and I did this uh, the mixing it up show every day at ten, and I swear the lawnmowers would be there the minute we started. The, it was just it was always funny. I would say nope, they're not here yet. I timed it good this time, and nope every time. So anyway, you're gonna put in a, a subject line something like seller's disclosure or looking forward to seeing you um, at the listing appointment, but you're going to send it as a live link and you're going to allow them to edit it. That's what makes it where they can go in and they can fill that document out. You can even give it, let's say you're listing it on Saturday and you want to make sure it's filled out by then. You can even put in a message and an expiration date if you want. But really the key to having them fill out the seller's disclosure is you're sending it as a live link and you're allowing them by simply checking off that box, you're allowing them to get that form and to be able to fill it out, okay? So once you've done that, and I'm just gonna show you really quick what uh, it looks like on their end. Of course, it's coming from you, the agent. Because um, let's face it, your seller has no idea who AuthentiSign is. They also have no idea who uh, uh, who Transaction Desk is. They just know that you're their trusted agent. So the email, of course, comes from you. As you can see, it says Colleen DeLang here. And as I open up that email, it's going to have my contact information and my company branding at the top my contact information down below, and a short little message that says, hey, just click on the form so that you can go in and fill it out. Once they do that, it's gonna open an editable form that they can, and if they make a mistake, the nice thing about this is instead of them scratching out, if you're familiar with this form, a lot of times they would do unknown, unknown, unknown. They get five unknown done, and they're like, oh, darn, there's a not available. That would be not available. And then they'd have to scratch it all out. So it does allow them to make changes to it. It opens up the field so that they can add in information. And all they have to do to get it back to you is just hit the save button. When they hit save, it will send a pop-up email to you, letting you know that they've gone in, opened the form, and saved it. Of course, they can print and download a copy for themselves, too. It's a nice, easy way of getting this form back before your listing appointment, so you're not waiting around for them to fill it out. Or, in a lot of cases, I would always just come back and pick it up the next day, but you got to drive all the way back. And let's face it, with the cost of gas right now, I don't know we want to do that. As you can see right down at the bottom of my screen, I was also just notified as the agent that my client has opened and saved the form. So now that form is right back in my file and they don't have to return it. They don't have to mail it back. They don't have to scan it back. They don't have to do anything. It's come right back to me. All right. So I added my disclosures. We talked about the data sheet. Um... I think I hit all the important stuff. Um, and so I think I'm gonna turn it over to Taylor now, if that's okay, because I've really, I've created our partial. Taylor's gonna show you all the awesome ways that you now can take this partial that we just created and add great photos, add descriptions, how to advertise it out onto social media. So if it's okay, Taylor, is this okay to uh, kick it over to you now? Yep, I'm good. I got everything ready to go. Um, we do have a comment, though. I know there's a few UPAR agents on. Um, do you mind explaining a couple of the things? Because there's some stuff that they don't have, um, but I believe a lot of it that that uh, you showed they do have. It might just be clarifying a couple things. Um, if you sure. could break that down of what you showed, what they have, and what they don't have yet. Sure. Great question. So, um, yeah, every every vendor at MLS and every association offers something different. Um, UPAR and, and everybody else on the call still has realist as far as the tax autofill bringing in a listing. So let me show you what I mean. Um, the, there is two versions of realist. There is a version that you can go into tax. You can search realist. You can search any property. You can create mailing labels. You can do all that stuff. That's like a separate version. But you do have a limited version with UPAR to still go in and add a listing from the tax record. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say you are not using Transaction Desk because I know UPAR uses ZipForm. Um, Zipform does have that push and pull integration, by the way. So you could go into Zipform, fill out your data sheet, click that push and have it pushed back. However, if you wanted to simply start your listing from the tax record, 
you could go to under the listing section, you could add in, um, let's say you wanted to add a single family home listing. There is something called tax autofill right here, and I should have showed this anyway. Um, that tax autofill button will pull up all 83 counties for the state of Michigan. So it'll pull up any county in the state of Michigan. So if you are not using the data form, if you're not using transaction desk or you don't fill out your data form in zip form and you want to just pull in from the tax records, you can do that too. So I can go to tax autofill. I can click on the county. And again, you're going to use that same cheat that I kind of keep uh, talking about. You're only going to put in the house number and the root street name. Again, leave off the drives, the ways, the places, the circles, the courts, just the root street name, house number and root street name. You're going to hit search. That's going to pull up that same that same concept that we looked at on the form side, but this is just doing it directly into Paragon. So if you're not using Transaction Desk or you're not using the data form in zip form yet, you still can go in and use that tax autofill. You're going to check off the tax autofill, check off the property, and this is going to allow you to deselect anything you don't want to autofill, but basically what it's going to allow you to do is keep you from having to fill out those 20 fields of information. What it does is it pulls the property record directly into the listing. So now if I go to the property information, you can see the address is there, the mail city's there. Um, the, the so so to answer the question, you part you don't have you probably don't have that red button on your listings as far as real list. So you can always pull it directly into Paragon because I know you're not using Transaction Desk. Soon you'll have zip form. Um, the data sheets will be turned on, so you'll be able to still, you know, uh, work with that push of integration. Um, so that will work similar. Obviously, it's a different program, so the buttons are different, it's labeled differently, um, but you'll still have that great push and pull of information. Um, everything else they should have. They have cloud, which I talked about. Um, UPAR does not have transaction desk. They use zip form. Um, and then they have the autofill from Realist, but not a separate Realist product. Everything else they should have. Um, they have HomeSnap Pro Premium. They have Cloud CMA. Uh, they have the single property website, which Taylor's going to demo. Um, and they have the autofill options into Paragon. So good question. Okay, good. Good. Thank you for clarifying that because I was... I was gonna respond, but I wanted to make sure I knew everything that they that they had, because um, yeah, we do have we do have a few UPAR people on. So, all right. Well, I will take over. Do you want to hand it off to me? I am handing away. There okay. you go. <laughs> okay. So let me see. <clears throat> Where am I? Nope. Okay. Seeing uh, Paragon, Colleen? I am. I see it. Okay. Okay, perfect. So just to start, everything Colleen showed was that start of creating a new listing. So we were, you know, at A, populating all of the data fields and going in from transaction desk or right into Paragon. And then what she would do from there is save it as a partial. What's really nice about Paragon is that you have a lot of flexibility in admin controls um, and saving it as a partial, which is a draft. So, oh, hang on, bounced around. I don't like how it does that. But um, so by saving it as a draft, this is really important because understanding the way the flow the flow of data is um, helps to kind of understand why you want to save your your listing as a partial. When a listing goes live, it is immediate to everybody in our regional MLS um, system, which I'm going to give you a little screenshot of what that looks like. This is our coverage right into Paragon. So all of our uh, members, all of our vendor members, uh, all of our data shares are all seeing this, this um listing information right away. So if you do not have it proofed, you do not have your photos added, you want to go in and you want to do any kind of promotional videos later, 
The problem with that is it goes live and they get these new listing alerts through Collaboration Center, which is a, an automated email notification. Um, they get communications through HomeSnap and things like that, as well as agents seeing it right away in Paragon. So if you go in and you add photos later or promotional video links later, that can take up to 48 hours to actually be pulled because it's seen as a media file update. It's not pulled in the data feed as a new listing alert. So when Colleen was creating this listing and everything that you saw, she would save it as a partial. Now, another thing that's really nice about Paragon is as a partial, if I was Colleen's admin, I can now go in as her in Paragon you can set somebody up to have admin access to you or as a broker, you would have your broker admin that can, can access anybody in your firm. And with that, I'm gonna pretend that I am Colleen's admin. And I'm gonna go in as her. So you'll see the change. Mine had the springtime, um, preferences, interface, and now Colleen's is all branded to her brokerage that she works for. So I'm going in as her and I can maintain her partials. I can add her photos, I can add captions and descriptions, or flip this around. I had an admin that added all my data fields. I gave the data sheet or populated the data sheet. And now me as the agent, I wanna be the final touch to when it goes live. I want to add captions and descriptions and such. So going in and now I can maintain my partials. So I'm going to click on the listing icon, go under maintain partials. I'm going to load that. Let me go into Colleen's partials and I'm going to open this up. So once that listing is, um, that the listing data fields are added, I can now go in and I can tab through any additional ones that I need to add. And one thing that I do wanna point out while we are in the um, data fields is everything is broken down into a container, which is nice. So you don't have like this crazy jumping around looking, you know, you can just simply tab through, you can minimize, you know what you've already completed. You kind of know it's broken down and labeled into sections for you. But down here, you'll see compensation and tours. This is a really cool feature because similar to the data feed that I was explaining, the system knows based on these fields where to pull these promotional videos that you can add. We have two branded fields and two unbranded fields and they get pulled into the correct locations. So if you were to work with a videographer to do a promotional video tour, you can have that videographer do a branded version or an unbranded version. Aerial footage is becoming very popular. You can have that videographer do a branded and an unbranded. Or something like what Colleen did here is she just did one right on her phone where she did a branded one where she's plugging herself at the beginning. Keller Williams Lakeside want to take you on a property tour of a new listing and her brokerage I'm Marsha Lane in beautiful downtown New Baltimore. Actually, we're just steps away from beautiful Lake St. Clair as well. So let me take you on a tour. Stepping inside here, we have an entrance to the one and a half car garage. We walk right into the living room. It does have a gas fireplace. And then just off to the left, we have a full first floor bathroom. So this is her branded one. She can go in and add share, copy that link. She also has an unbranded one where she doesn't talk about who she is or her office. And it's the same footage where she is showing the home. So if you do not hire somebody that is going to do promotional videos, you can simply do these yourself as well. Uh, Colleen actually did these um, at the beginning of the lockdown because you couldn't do open houses and you couldn't do tours. So this was a way for people to kind of see these homes um, as if they were there as best that we could at the time. 
Um, and she was able to put these links in the branded and in the unbranded. And the way that this works is if you have a branded one, that goes out to all the advertising sites that you may have, such as your single property website, um, advertising portals, things like that. What's really nice too is if you put the unbranded, then that goes out to like the collaboration center. That shows up in the MLS system. Um, you can search tours and open houses and things like that. So if you wanted to go ahead and you wanted to add anything, schedule those and add any promotional videos, you can do that. Um, so it knows to pull as well as IDX on other agent sites. Of course, you don't want advertising of other agents on your site. So you can actually have this, have this link in there and then that proper video gets pulled to the correct sources. So this is a really nice feature, whether you use a professional or you do them yourself. Some questions that we get um, about Colleen doing it herself is, well, how did she go about doing that? Do you upload the movie file? No, you actually just can put it in YouTube, share the link, um, and it's hosted on YouTube. You can't upload a video file like an MP4 or anything like that. But sometimes people wonder like, okay, well, how do I do that? We have a episode of Mixing It Up where we have an agent that shows how he does little promotional videos right from his phone. So he uses um, the Clip app that's in your iPhone and he just kind of splices and edits just some really basic videos together and uploading that and how you can simply grab that link. So um, if you, uh, Colleen, if you don't mind, I should have probably grabbed this first, but if you want to find that video, um, in our Mixing It Up episodes, we can add that into the chat too. So if this sure. is something that you'd be interested in doing, um, there's kind of a little mini tutorial on how to do that. Sure. Cool. Thank you. Should have <laughs> grabbed it before, but I, it just came to me about that video. So <clears throat> oh, that's perfect. So now I'm going in and let me open it back up again. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to close out. And I am going to save that as a partial, everything that I've added. And I wanna go in and I wanna just edit some photos. I wanna upload my photos. And what's really nice about um, the system is that you can upload up to 99 photos. Little excessive, <laughs> we've had people use it, um, but at least you're not limited to you know 25 photos or 30 photos i think it was a long time ago because honestly the one that i'm showing you guys right now was a four bedroom home with um w where i don't even have the finished basement shown or the backyard and i used 38 photos now i'm a believer in quality over quantity but to give that tour experience and tell that story you might need to take a couple different angles of certain rooms and maybe some close-up shots and highlight some really nice features. And honestly, for a four bedroom home, an upstairs, downstairs, nice basement, you will easily go over, um, should go easily over 30 photos in my opinion. So with that, you can upload 99 at a, at a time, it'll load them, uh, loads, loads fairly quickly as well. And then you can go in and you can uh, add <clears throat> and edit the captions and descriptions as well as the photo. So if you wanted to actually change the orientation, you can, <laughs> which comes in handy. This was something that was added a long time ago, but um, a request that we made to Paragon because people were taking more and more agents were taking photos with their phone. And the thing with your phone is you don't, you know, you know what up and down is when you're holding your phone vertically, <laughs> but if you're holding it horizontally, it changes that orientation for you. So <clears throat> if you were to take a photo and it's uploaded upside down, how frustrating is it to have to edit it in another program so that the orientation is correct? You don't even have to worry about that. You can just change the orientation upon upload, um, which becomes you know, really convenient since many agents are using their smartphones to take photos. Cropping is, uh, was also added. Now this also comes in handy because so many times when you see something and you look at the photo again and something creeps into the corner, 
and you're just like, ugh. So you can go ahead and you can edit that. Um, once the photos are uploaded, it's gonna go in the order of the file number. So um, it may be 01, 02, 03. That will be the order, but that doesn't mean that's the order you leave it in. You can simply just drag and drop to decide on the order that you would like. So I'm gonna kind of give some examples of some tips that I recommend in the order of your photos as well as utilizing the captions and descriptions. Little taste of what's covered in the photo program. Um, but to do that, you just simply drag and drop and then it'll say add a label. As you can see right down here, I think I had one that still said add a label, but maybe not. Um, it'll just say add a label right where it says mudroom right now. You can open that up. The label is gonna be that caption. Now this goes out on the single property website. This gets sent out to all the portals. This gets sent out in collaboration center, um, available in the gallery view in the MLS and depending on the vendor of the IDX, as well as IDX sites on agents, so um, agent sites. So really important to really take this time. It's not just the MLS. It gets sent out to all of these other places as well. Now, the label is just gonna be 25 characters that you can add. The description is 255. So basically, you can write a little paragraph to promote something. Now, the way I recommend using the captions and descriptions is to kind of just highlight some things that maybe could be easily overlooked, one. Two, kind of give a transit transition to what they should be looking at in the photo to follow what's the next photo that will be coming. I'll point one out that I did that for. Um, and three, just to maybe kind of tell that story of what it would be like to live in this home similar to what you would maybe do in person, right? So take that um, expertise and apply it to a little paragraph in Paragon because it's definitely worth it in the grand scheme of things to all the places that these um, words are gonna be going, these captions and descriptions. So you can simply just click add those. I'll show the sample listing in just, in just a second where you can see the storytelling that I did but you can then go in and do that. So um, one thing that I do recommend is when you are going through your listing, <clears throat> definitely open up the gallery view and just experience it as if you were somebody who's never been in this home, okay? And make sure the flow makes sense. Don't just jump from room to room. Um, so the way that I recommend uploading your photos is, you know, one to two photos of the front of the home, depending on the features of the home. So like I said, I think you have about, it's more about quality than quantity, but you have about 10 photos to get somebody's attention to continue on. Of course, the inventory is really low. There's a lot of demand there, but generally that's, you know, a, a great practice you're going to not want to have five photos of the front yard before they get to the meat and potatoes of the listing. However, if there's some really unique selling features to the um, outside of the home, that doesn't necessarily mean have all of the backyard photos or anything like that yet. But let's say they have um, a pole barn. Let's maybe have that property, have the, the front of the home, and then have a nice little highlighted feature. Or if they're on a lake, highlight that right in those first 10 photos, but you can save more of it to the end as a nice closer and a nice reminder at the end. So when you take your primary photo, we kind of talk about the lighting that you should look for in the photo class um, to get the best contrast as well as um, how to shoot your primary photo. Now this one is done with a drone. I can, you know, can obviously see that um, because I'd have to be a giant to take that photo from up there. But you wanna have a little bit of sky, you wanna have the whole home and you wanna have some um, of the yard. So I explain this as rule of thirds. So sky, home, yard so that there's kind of an even distribute um it's evenly distributed um, and gives balance to that photo 
Now, going into the home, the nice way to organize your listing photos is how they would experience coming home or or how a visitor would experience coming into your coming into your space. So I chose to do the mudroom at the beginning, like as if I was coming home after a long day of work, parked in the garage, and now I'm coming in through the mudroom versus the foyer. Um, but I chose this just because the mudrooms are a really sell big selling feature right now. I would know I would love to have one. Um, so I feel like that was one I wanted to get in front of their face right away. And using the descriptions, I just didn't point out that this is the mudroom. I told that story as it's an extremely useful mudroom with custom built-in benches and hangers for backpacks, purses, briefcases, and more. There's a mini office space for your bills and receipts, which I would personally really like to have as well, so that they're not collecting on my counter or my kitchen uh, table. And so your kitchen is free of clutter, as well as a large walk-in pantry and coat closet. So you're kind of setting that tone to what's coming next. Little uh, different angle. Now, honestly, two photos of this mudroom would probably have been sufficient, but I was definitely um, really into this mudroom, so I took a little extra one. Now I'm going into another main space. So I have some sort of entry point that I'm gonna show, highlighting that, and now I'm gonna go into the main space, the main space that leads into that entrance. So I wouldn't have jumped right to the living room from here because that's not how I would walk through the home. Now, if I came in through the foyer, I would do the foyer shot and then go into the living room because the living room is over by the foyer. So you just wanna have that smooth transition because when I was looking for homes, um, now some of this may seem like common sense to, to many agents, but when I was looking for homes, I can tell you how frustrated I used to get um, where I, I was struggling to piece together the space. So am I gonna take some personal time off to go view this house if I'm just not really being sold on it and I'm confused looking at it and how it flows and was this the master bedroom or was this just the second or third bedroom? Um, one time there was a, a nicer basement that was redone. Um, the kitchen was nicer than the upstairs basement. So the agent just added the basement kitchen right at the beginning. So then when I got to the other kitchen, I was really confused. It just jumped around. It's like, why would I start down in the basement? So um, the order of photos really is important to stress because as somebody who is a buyer, it got really frustrating. And I'm sure many of you guys as agents can also experience that deciding if this is maybe a listing that would be great for your buyer as well. Um, so just highlighting that um, it'd be nice to cook a delicious meal here, beautiful, fully updated kitchen. <clears throat> now I did the kitchen from another angle. So for main rooms or really big bedrooms, things like that, I do like to have two different angles as well as a close-up photo of something that is nice about that space. So this other angle was really good to have because the first photo was really difficult to show those double ovens. So I can show the stainless steel appliances better, highlight the double ovens. Now I'm mixing in a close-up photo here. This is a technique we'll talk about in the photo program where it's shallowed up the field. And now I'm showing the, the uh, little nook dining room as well as the butler's quarter, zooming in on that nice sink, using shallow depth of field. Another thing that I like to do is if I see something that has odd numbers, I like to shoot that straight on. Similar to the front of the home where I talked about rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is a technique used in a lot of design, a lot of um, art, photography being one of them, where you, look at the frame split up into thirds, whether that's vertically or, or horizontally, and you are able to give that balance. So if I see an odd number of something, I'm just drawn to shoot it straight on and kind of give that nice balance and highlighting this big, beautiful island and the lighting fixtures and things like that. Now I'm going to go into 
the living room, show a couple different angles there. <clears throat> you can see where it is placed if you missed that in one of the previous photos. And now another angle. Here I like to highlight the windows, the electric fireplace, and the um, wood beams. Ultimately, it's good to have the fireplace on, TVs off. I was not able to turn on the fireplace for this photo shoot, or else I would have. Another thing that I like to point out is perspective. Um, it, it can be difficult to show the space in more eye-catching ways. Something might be appealing to somebody that is that's appealing to one person, um, maybe isn't as appealing to the other person. They want to kind of see it at eye level, where others want to be able to show the space um, or see the space a little differently, getting higher, getting lower. Um, we'll kind of talk about that as well in the photo program. And this is an example of a transitional shot that I was talking about where you're just kind of given that little teaser before I move in. So you saw how I did that with the open concept and the nook and the kitchen, and you saw a little bit of the living room. But now by me jumping from here, using this photo to jump into the other room, you're able to kind of get an idea of where this space is, that little hallway. But if you didn't, I use the descriptions to explain that. So that's what I was trying to say when I said use the descriptions to either sell something of that experience of living there, um, transitions of, you know, something that they maybe missed in the photos or where it is in relation to the other rooms. Um, <clears throat> and now a different, uh, this is where I mentioned that's near the living room, short hallway with a half bathroom near this um, little home office where you can work from home. And now we're going into the half bath. The half bath, um, we'll talk about uh, photographing small spaces with perspective types of equipment that's great to use too. Um, so this is just kind of a, you know, an example of how when you are uploading your photos, how that flow is recommended um, to tell that story. A couple different angles, jump around, um, don't jump around too much, make it so that it all goes in flow. Um, as to how they would experience walking through the home, and then some close-up shots if there is something that's worthy of doing maybe a little creative uh, highlighted feature, like a nice sink, hardware, backsplashes. Um, gardens are really nice to do a close-up macro creative shot mixed in there. So we talk about a lot of these um, techniques and many more in the photo program. We have usually one scheduled um, each quarter. So we're just finishing up one right now. Uh, the part two of the class is um, the first week of May. You do have to take part one to take part two, um, but you um, will be able to see more for the um, next quarter's program that will be posted with a two-part, it's a two-part series or two-part class program that you can uh, sign up for. So now that I've went in, all the listing fields are added, my promotional videos, my captions and descriptions and photos. I did my overall gallery view tour of what that experience looks like and any changes that I'd wanna make. This is where I can go in and I can add my documents. Um, any disclosures, lead-based paint, anything like that. This is where I can add my um, scheduled open houses. So really, really easy. Just go hit add new. Um, one thing that they added in 2020 that we didn't have before, based on a request that um, I believe Colleen made, is to add a live stream link. So as things were locked down, um, as people were being really cautious um, at the beginning of the pandemic and throughout, throughout um, you know, a lot of the pandemic, you were able to um, do a tour or kind of like an open house with Zoom and you could schedule that out, promote it on social media, and then if people wanted to watch it, they could jump on that link. So you could easily schedule this out as an in-person one right here in the system that goes into the market monitor that goes in that goes um out on the promotional 
single property website if there's an open house scheduled or a tour scheduled. Um, but if you just wanted to do a little virtual promotion, you have that option now too. So you can put that link in, you can put the date and the time, and then that goes out to all the um, places that I mentioned. Same with the tour, very similar, same format where you can go in and you can do that. Now, I am uh, happy with my listing. Didn't mean to close that out. Um, I'm ready for it to go live. I proofed it. I um, saved it as a partial. And you know what? 7 a.m. I'm ready for this, this listing to go live. I am going in and I can just simply hit save. And now it's bam. It's out in Collaboration Center. It's through all of our regional data shares, vendor partners. Um, within all of our other data shares within an hour, goes out on all of those places, sites, portals, IDX, everything within an hour for a new listing. And then of course, live right away in the MLS, they'll get a notification if this meets their criteria. So having all of this ready to rock and roll is really important. So now that my listing is live, Within, I think it's 20 minutes, Colleen, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's usually about 20 minutes, a single property website is created for your listing. So you right. will get an email as well as a quick action link will be um, on your listing. Let me just pull up one where you can see this, It'll actually be Colleen's listing. <clears throat> So this is one of her active it. listings right now. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say, Colleen? I, I said I love the single property website. Yeah, this was something that we custom designed um, based on just kind of looking at a lot of different sites and things that we liked about, um, you know, one site over here and one site over there and pieced it together on a design that we would like. Um, and we uh, worked with a website designer to create the single property website with for all of our men, um, members and vendor partners that opt in to have this. And you can then share the single property website, which let me just show you what it is before I talk about it. But you'll see the little quick action link on your listing or it will come through as an email for you too. So you don't have to then go into Paragon and do it. You'll um, get that email notification. And then when I open that up, now there's a beautiful single property website for you to advertise your listing and you, nobody else, no other listings. Um, this is totally geared towards you. They can request a showing through there. <clears throat> If Colleen had an open house scheduled, there'd be a little open house icon right next to the gallery view. Um, if she had some promotional tour videos that were live with this, there would also be icons. So all of these would have little tabs up here for people to click on and watch those videos, see the open house information. Um, and as they scroll down, they can either click on the photos or they can go up to the gallery view browse through these photos, high resolution. Sorry, that was before the cleanup crew. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm happy with your lighting. I know that this guy was a collector of uh, oh my God. many things. <laughs> so you can, um, you can say it nicely. He was a hoarder. <laughs> had some hoarding. Uh, the, some hoarding, over, uh, 700, <laughs> over 700 boxes in that house right now. So uh, they're supposed to clean it out next week. So there'll be nice Taylor-like photos here shortly. You might even want to show um show that 205 uh, Lake Shore, Tom's. That's that's a oh, great yeah, one. Oh yeah, that was a good idea. It's it's just put in Lake. It'll come up. It's Lake Shore, but two words. It's to yeah, take the sh out. There you go. There you go. Yeah, show yeah. that one. I love that good one. Good call. Good call. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Let's I don't really have any, do I don't this. have the fancy million Let's dollar. Let's really do this call. single property <laughs> website justice, right? Yeah. So, open this up. Um Oh, perfect. See, he has that he has the virtual tour and a video promotional tour. 
that links out where you can watch that um, as well as a virtual tour. I'm assuming they're all branded to him. Um, and then schedule a showing. You can open up the photos right from the gallery or you can just click on them. It goes right into that. That's beautiful. How come I don't get those kind of listings, Taylor? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Gorgeous. <clears throat> so as you scroll through, um, you kind of saw briefly when I was showing Colleen's, but there's the little um, remark descriptions that you add. It's really icon based with the um, highlighted, the main features of the home, like the square footage, um, bedrooms, baths. Then general fields that they need to know. There's not going to be anything confidential that would be in here. This is all geared towards the public and to promote the agent. Interactive map, as well as a lead capture contact form, all of your branding. And then these aren't other agents listings. These are agents other listings. So um, that was one thing that was getting really frustrating is we would see agents sharing from advertising portals. And the problem with that is there would be um, advertising for people that paid for it as looking like it was their listing and that's who they reach out to. And then they would get that lead capture and it bring them onto other listings when really the agent just wanted to highlight that this listing is new or to the market or just went pending da, 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 and kind of give you an idea. Um, so once you have that single property website created, you can easily go into social media, just a quick action link right here. We'll just do Facebook for this example. Go into Facebook, opens up that large primary photo. This is where you would write a description that is going to be about three sentences long is what I recommend. Uh, why they should care, something about the property, um, why they should care in a call to action. So that call to action would be um, something like, if you have any questions, go ahead and reach out to me, bye, 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 bye. Or um, you're interested in scheduling a showing, there's a schedule a showing button, just kind of to give them something to know that they can go directly to you to get any information about this property easily. Um, and just kind of highlighting big, beautiful new home, um, updated kitchen, yada, yada, why they should care. This one's going to sell quickly and a call to action. Now I'm going to just post it so you can see how it looks on, um, how you can see how it's going to look on my page. If it wants to, okay. And now I'm going to go to my Facebook page. <clears throat> and this is where post you can see how it will display a little paragraph would be above that. Now, um, one thing that I will say based on the uh, social media rules through Facebook is if you are doing anything for commercial gain, you do want to make sure that you have that on a business page. So you'll want to go ahead and create a business page if you have not already, or just make sure that you share this to your business page, and then you can reshare it from the business page source to your personal page. So it's really easy to do that if you just open it up and you can then toggle to a page that you manage and I can go in there and I can simply do that and then publish it. And then once I have it on my page, I can then reshare it right to my personal page if I wanted to. So. Another option that we like to highlight is HomeSnap. HomeSnap has a single property website too that's created. So you have some options. We have many agents that will, you know, start with a single property website, do that, wait a couple days, and then share it from HomeSnap. HomeSnap's a great lead capture single property website as well because what it does is it allows them to create a 
account under you as an agent to browse accurate information right from HomeSnap, which is the MLS mobile app um, that's geared towards clients. So HomeSnap has the pro version, which is anybody who's an agent that's set up gets the pro version where they get all this um, agent information. They can go in and they can do um, opt in to extra pro features where they can advertise and things like that, like a pro pro plus premium, um, pro plus it's called. They can edit their listings. They can do things like that. But if you were to share the single property website, they can create an account to browse the MLS within HomeSnap under you. And it, it is integrated with like text messaging. Um, they can favorite. You can kind of see what those uh, lead captures incubating those leads would be. Um, another way that you can do this is just setting up an already existing client so that they're not going on other inaccurate places um, or if they just kind of want to look on their own too. They don't want to have to wait for everything to come through to them. They can simply do that in HomeSnap. So there'll be a little HomeSnap branded icon quick action link on your listing in paragon you can click on that and what that'll do is it'll open up this single property website <clears throat> still really nice looking and now you can go in and you can share that to social media too right here from the share icon <clears throat> And lastly, it's not really about the listing, but one thing that I do like to highlight is that you can share your public profile. So if you want to use this as a tool as well to capture leads to get people to create an account, you can easily do that. So what you're seeing here is um, if they want have any questions, they wanna browse in the MLS, you can actually share this profile right to your Facebook page. <clears throat> this is where <clears throat> this is where when they open this up, they're able to see little information about me if I added that in as well as my contact information and they can create an account under my profile if they wanted to to browse the MLS. All right, Colleen, so I'm gonna hand it back off to you. Um, were there any questions of anything that I can address? I don't think so. I think you covered all of the questions and you thought you did a great job of going through all of that. You do it, you, you. you just make it flow so nicely. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so last, there's just a couple uh, quick points I do want to point out um, uh, the cloning. So you can clone a listing um, if you, let's say that you have a listing, it expired. And this does um, also go for you, Par. Um, if you had a listing in the previous system, and let's say it expired yesterday and you now want to clone it, you can, as long as it's your own, you can only clone your own listings, let me put, put it that way, um, you can clone a listing and you can maintain a listing. A couple other things I wanted to point out back in the day when I was first licensed, it would work like this. We would have a listing that maybe didn't sell right away, so we would take it off the market and then put it back on the market, but guess what? We didn't have things like Zillow 22 years ago and IDX sites that keep cumulative days on market. So keep in mind, if you have a problem listing or you have a listing that you want to remove that history, in order to make it a new listing, it has to be off the market for a full 30 days. Once it goes onto the market on day 31, it does wipe out that cumulative history at that point. Otherwise, it does keep counting. Um, when properties go pending, this was a UPAR question I got a lot this week. When a property does go pending, it does hold those days on market. So if it went pending at three days, it stops the clock at three days. That is not the case if you market accepting backup offers because technically that follows the active rules on a listing. So be aware, um, a lot of people who like to use accepting um, backup offers is not my favorite status. It's basically a pended 
listing or a listing with an offer on it that's remaining active and you're continuing to show it. So you want to let your clients know, yeah, you know, we can go look at that house. Absolutely. Because they're going to see it on places like Zillow and IDX sites. But you might want to prep them that there is an accepted offer on that property. Also be aware if you use accepting backup offers, it does not hold the days like a pending does. A pending stops the clock when you take that pending offer um, where, you know, an accepting backup offer, you could be 40 days into it. It's still showing 40 days. Um, and then not all boards practice coming soon, but you do see coming soon's going through the data share. The rules for a coming soon is no one, not the listing agent, not the listing team, not the listing broker can show that property in a coming soon status until it hits activation. Um, a coming soon can be coming soon for up to seven days. Does not have to be seven days though, could be two. They might just wanna paint the living room. And so coming soons were really designed to keep agents from pocket listing. We were having so many agents put signs in the lawn and then Taylor's trying to show it to her client and unfortunately she can't because the only person who can get in the house was the listing agent. So policy eight was created by NAR. And what it said is that you have uh, to, you have to get it into the MLS within 24 hours of advertising. That means postcards, flyers, Facebook posts. Um, sometimes your clients are out there posting it on Facebook. That counts, by the way. So the policy eight says you have 24 hours to get it in from the time it starts, you start advertising it. Um, coming soon again, cannot be shown by the listing agent or the broker or anyone within that coming soon period until activation that levels the playing field we don't want obviously that person double dipping and that homeowner only seeing offers from that particular agent and it was really designed again to keep agents from sticking a sign in the yard and two weeks go by and you can't get your clients in but now it's already pending so that was how that worked um, I think that was it. I think that was all that I had as far as uh, maintenance. Remember, you can always go in and maintain your listing. You can share. There's a bunch of different ways to share on um, your listing, too. I know Taylor covered some of those, but I think that was all I had. Did I miss anything, Taylor? Nope. Just some um, great feedback. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Judy. Um, like Colleen mentioned, you can see this recorded on our YouTube channel. It's usually up within a couple days. Um, and I forgot to mention, even though we added all these links in the chat to things in our YouTube channel, if you do not subscribe, please subscribe because we're going to be giving out a $100 Amazon gift card to our subscribers. So there's going to be a, not every subscriber, a drawing to our subscribers on um on, on May uh, 19th. So go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button if you haven't already. If you have, great. You'll also be part of the drawing. It's it's at um it's at, based on all of our subscribers um to to win and as well as check out some of those videos that Colleen posted. Um it is a really common question about some of those the tours that um that people want to just do themselves and you know how to how to do that the best way um so that video is really helpful um for everybody as well as all our recorded classes are up there um, for you to watch as well awesome well thank you everybody taylor great job today yep you too thank you all right have a wonderful day everyone and thank you for hopping on with us today thanks everybody happy selling Bye. Bye.